Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new week. Uh, this is Monday, March 22nd, and uh, it seems hard to believe that we are now coming up on Palm Sunday. So each of our uh, scripture readings today, and readings for reflection and so forth, uh, will be uh, leading into that Palm Sunday uh, celebration. And so uh, I remind you, for you, if you may be joining new, that this is not your typical Bible study or prayer meeting or hymn sing. We will read scripture together. We'll pray together. We'll read verses from hymns. We'll read uh, some uh, writings of other authors and theologians. But this is really the main uh, crux of this is to carve out time to get alone with God and allow his Holy Spirit to speak into our spirit. And so... It is a time during this first 15 minutes to kind of prepare our heart and mind for that, to read the scriptures, to see what the Holy Spirit might uh, pull up off of that page, and really um, kind of prick our conscience and heart uh, with, so that then we can jot that word or phrase down and then go spend some alone time uh, with God and see what His Holy Spirit would, uh, has to say further about that word or phrase. So we uh, always start with the uh, world's greatest collection of church jokes. Uh, again, this is compiled and edited by Paul M. Miller. And uh, the very last one on the very last page is probably why it's about the hereafter. It's uh, this. The preacher told me the other day, I should be thinking about the hereafter. I told him, I do, all the time, no matter where I am, in the parlor, upstairs, in the kitchen, or even in the basement. I'm always asking myself, now what am I here after? <laughs> well, that one uh, made me chuckle because I find myself doing that uh, way too often. So as we uh, prepare to go into this time of uh, reading together, let us uh, go to the Lord in prayer uh, as we prepare our heart and mind. Almighty God, you are the light and life of every soul and my only source of hope. Grant that in this time of worship, I may experience your transforming power, preparing me for the ministry of this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, we always have a theme for the week, and the theme for this week is the wounds and sorrows of ministry. And so we're going to start uh, with that theme in mind. We're going to start with Psalm uh, 56 as our psalm for this week. So again, it is the wounds and sorrows of ministry. Psalm 56. Uh, I'm reading from the New International Version. Be merciful to me, my God, for my enemies are in hot pursuit all day long. They press their attack. My adversaries pursue me all day long, and their pride many are attacking me. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise. In God I trust and am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? All day long they twist my words. All their schemes are for my ruin. They conspire they lurk, they watch my steps, hoping to take my life. Because of their wickedness, do not let them escape. In your anger, God, bring the nations down. Record my misery. List my tears on your scroll. Are they not in your record? Then my enemies will turn back when I call for help. By this I will know that God is for me. In God, whose word I praise, in the Lord, whose word I praise, in God I trust and am not afraid. What can man do to me? I am under vows to you, my God. I will present my thank offerings to you, for you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Well, that can certainly speak right into your heart and soul if you're going through a particular rough spot in life, especially relationally. Uh, with someone uh, else who is, you feel like has become uh, your enemy and is after you and uh, twisting words and truth and things like that. So, well, that was Psalm 56. Uh, 
the whole psalm spoke to me. And so I hope that there's a word or phrase that has spoken to you. And we can spend some time, quiet time with that. Well, our uh, scripture reading then from, uh, the, New, from the New Testament of uh, Acts here. Um, it's Acts 14, 19 through 28. So if you want to turn to Acts 14, verses 19 through 28, you may have a different version. Again, I'm going to read from the New International Version again. Acts 14, 19 through 28. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. The next day, he and Barnabas left for Derby. They preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them, each, for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. After going through Pisidia, they came into Pamphylia, and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. From Italia, they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. And they stayed there a long time with the disciples. So uh, always people uh, going to work against you when you're do going about the Lord's work. And so we need not fear that uh, if we're doing the Lord's work and we're following his calling and uh, doing his will, then uh, he is always going to find a way uh, for us. Well, the reading for reflection today comes from our very own John Wesley, if you're a part of the United Methodist Church. And you will recognize uh, this excerpt immediately as soon as I begin it, probably. In the evening, I went very unwillingly to a society in, on Alders, in Aldersgate Street where one was reading Luther's preface to the epistle to the Romans. About a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation. And an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. Again, John Wesley, and we have uh, seen and heard uh, those words in that reading many, many times, certainly. Well, we come to our time together where we can pause and uh, lift up whatever's on our heart. Lift up your whole heart, everything that's in it. You may have a request that you want to lift up to God, maybe a joy, it uh, may be something else. But just take a few moments to lift, uh, lift up your prayer request, your joy or concern, and then I'll close uh, with a closing prayer and we'll close out together. Lord God, we know that uh, as each and every one of us are a follower of Christ, we find that we're all called to be ministers of Christ, that we are all to do your will in uh, sharing your love and your light in spreading your kingdom in whatever community and culture we live in. So Lord, I pray that uh, your love will be in us and flowing through us that it is your love that will be our passion and our drive in everything that we do. Lord, we lift up all of these uh, concerns that we have for brokenness in this community, brokenness in our lives, brokenness in ministry, whatever needs uh, repair and healing. Or let us throw our trust completely upon you and the Holy Spirit, knowing that you will lead and guide us through all of that. You will counsel us, you will comfort us, and uh, provide for every need. We thank you, Lord, for that. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. 
Amen. Well, our uh, hymn for the week is uh, by uh, an anonymous author. I'm not really sure who wrote it. But it is, O sacred head now wounded. I'll read the first verse. O sacred head now wounded, with grief and shame weighed down, now scornfully surrounded with thorns thine only crown. How pale thou art with anguish, with sore abuse and scorn. How does this visage language languish, which once was bright as morn? So regardless of whatever suffering we go through, we can always remember that uh, Christ also uh, suffered uh, as well, and he did that uh, on our behalf. We'll hear this benediction uh, now as we go forth from here and go into our quiet time. Go forth into this day with the strong name of Jesus Christ to sustain you. Amen and amen. Well, thanks for joining me. It is a blessing uh, to me that you do so. I am thankful for each and every one of you as you have come here to, uh, to carve this time out of your day. I know uh, many of you, you can't make every day, but you uh, try hard to make as many of these as you can. And uh, it does take a little time and effort uh, to produce these. And I'm just very appreciative of you joining me to, to be able to spend this quiet time, really the, uh, the ultimate uh, blessing is spending this quiet time alone with God. So blessings on you as you go in uh, and commune with him, with his Holy Spirit. We'll see you tomorrow.